Okay, in this lecture, we're going to start talking about solutions. Not solutions, just problems, but solution solutions, as in mixing two different types of species together. And those two types of species can be any number of things. They can be atoms, they can be molecules. Uh, we're just gonna call them atom A and atom B, or species A and species B. A and B. Let's think of them as atoms for now. So we're putting these together, and it's convenient to think in terms of molecular uh, weights or uh, uh, weights, uh, um, molecular fractions or mole fractions. So we're going to call XA. X, B, fractions of A and B, X, A plus X, B equals one. So X, A and X, B are gonna range from zero to one and they're gonna tell us the fraction of each in our system. And what we're gonna do is we're going to take uh, and create a system of A atoms and B atoms that are mixed together. And there's two ways that we can do that. And because we know that the Gibbs free energy is a state function, then following those two different paths and the mathematical descriptions of those paths, we'll be able to uh, understand the relationship between uh, mixing chemical potential and uh, composition. So the first way that we're going to think is we're going to think about having a reservoir of A, which is pure A, and a reservoir of B, we're going to have a system and we're going to put in XA and XB into that system. And we're going to have a thin partition between them. So these two reservoirs of A and B is going to have a Gibbs energy of G sub A, and this will have a Gibbs energy of G sub B. So presumably we know uh, this because we know A and B, those are well studied. Now, after we have these together, we're going to remove the partition Parallel writing. And in doing that, we get a system of A and B mixed. So what makes this set of pictures useful is because we can now say G is equal to G zero plus delta G of mixing. So this is just the, the uh, system in which we have A atoms and B atoms together. And because we still have that partition, we know the free energy of the A species and we know the free energy of the B species, and we know the amount of A, and we know the amount of B, which means that G0 is equal to XA, GA plus XB, GB, 
right? It's just how much of each do we mix in? And what that means is that if we have a plot here of G versus the mole fraction of B, so that's pure A and that's pure B, if my GA is here, and GB is there, then this line is G0, right? It's just a linear mixing, right? That's what this equation tells us. So what happens though, is that the mixing that will give you the deviation from that line and that deviation is delta G mix. And that delta G mix is a function of the temperature and the composition. I just write XB because if you know XB, then you also know XA because uh, we know that they're, uh, uh, they add up to one. And, uh, whoops, this is also going to depend on pressure, I should point out, but we're treating this all as a uh, constant pressure. system for now. And I think you've seen when we looked at the pressure temperature phase diagram, how complicated things become when you start to include pressure in terms of needing to think about compressibility, bulk modulus, uh, and uh, thermal expansion. So let's, uh, let's just work here with a constant pressure regime. Okay. Uh, so that Gibbs of mixing, we can write in terms of the enthalpy of mixing and the entropy of mixing. The enthalpy of mixing is equal to the enthalpy after it's mixed minus the enthalpy unmixed, and the entropy of mixing is equal to the entropy after minus the entropy in the unmixed state. Right? And if you think about that, we also know this delta G not is also equal to H naught minus T S naught. So if we're putting delta G into that, then simply the act of getting these uh, delta G of mixing, getting these, uh, these terms are really the name of the game. So let's, let's start with the simplest case. And this is called ideal solution. And in the ideal solution, we say that the species mix, but they don't interact. And if they don't interact, the delta H in mixing is equal to zero. And this is our definition of the ideal mixture, which means that delta G mix is purely minus T delta S, delta S of mixing. So how do we get to the entropy? Well, we're going to come to this 
through a statistical understanding. And I wanna come back and talk about statistical understanding. And this, this is gonna be chapter four of the Gaskell textbook. Uh, but I wanna do that after we get toward the end of the class. Cause I think we've got kind of a, a nice uh, narrative going and uh, we'll come back and, and show where this comes from. But for now, for now, uh, what you need to know is that from our statistical interpretation of, of uh, entropy and, and thermodynamics, the entropy is defined as the Boltzmann constant times the natural log of the number of microstates consistent with the macrostate. So to kind of allude a little bit about uh, what this means, think about uh, you know a box with coins, right? Say you've got uh, you know three coins in a box, and you say how many ways can I get you know all heads? Well, only one. If you think how many ways can I get two heads and one tail? Head, head, tail. Well, there's three ways. Number of ways to get tail, tail, head is three, and number of tail, tail, tail is one. So if you were to say, what would you expect or what, what's, what is the uh, highest entropy? Uh, the highest entropy would be a mixture of two and one because there's six ways to get that and one way to get each of these. So if you, if you want to think of it as uh, adding up all the possible ways that the microstates can arrange themselves and counting the number of ways that each, the, the number of microstates that represent each macrostate, and then that gives you the entropy. We'll come back to it right now. This is what you need to know. And if you say, how do you determine the number of microstates consistent with a macrostate, meaning how many ways, if I have, uh, you know, N A atoms and a certain number of B atoms, how many different ways? Can I uh, arrange these? Or for example, I could I could uh, you know exchange that for this. How many diff different uh, different uh, Structural combinations can give me NA and NB. Well, this comes from uh, the multinomial theorem. And omega is equal to NA plus NB factorial over NA factorial times NB factorial. So that's going to give you the number of ways that you can mix uh, a certain number of A atoms and B atoms. But because if we have N mole in the system, and we say, well, What's Na? Well, Na is the mole fraction of A times the number of moles in the system. And we know 
most of the time, you know, the world has multiple moles, right? Uh, think a, a mole of copper is, you can hold in your hand uh, times Na, and this is Avogadro's number. And similarly, Nb is equal to X B N and A, we can substitute these into here and substitute this into here. And with a little minor algebra and using the Stirling approximation, that the natural log of n factorial is equal to, well, approximately equal to n natural log of n minus n. Or large n, and this will be a large n because, uh, you know, with Avogadro's number, uh, this is going to be, uh, you know, an astronomical number. With this, we get the delta S of mixing is equal to minus R X A natural log of A plus X B natural log of XB. Now remember that uh, R is equal to Avogadro's number times the Boltzmann. So that's uh, how we get rid of the uh, Boltzmann constant up here and the uh, Avogadro's number in our expression. Okay, so with this, uh, X, A, and B are both always less than one, which means this entire expression is always less than zero, which is why we have the negative outside which means delta S of mixing is larger than zero. So this form of entropy is called configurational entropy. Uh, in materials, we, we consider uh, two other modes of entropy. We consider uh, thermal and this has to do with uh, the vibrational states and more importantly, the number of localized modes that have a particular one of those vibrational states, right? So the occupation of vibrational states, if you will. Uh, and the other is electronic. And this has to do with how electrons will occupy the states. And, you, you know, at zero Kelvin, you know, it's just the ground state is full, but as you increase the temperature, electrons start becoming excited, and the number of ways that can happen. Uh, now, we're ignoring both of these here, and everything we're thinking about is just purely the configurational component.
So let's uh, go back to our delta G of mixing and get mix minus T delta S mix. That is zero. So we get delta G of mixing is equal to T R X A natural log X A plus X B natural log of X B. And see, we had this negative sign here, and we had this negative sign here, which makes this whole thing positive. But that is less than zero. Therefore, delta G mixing is always less than zero. And that's why G, G naught, G A, A, B, G B, that's why our Gibbs curve will always look like this for the ideal solution. And, and what's more, there's a temperature dependence there, right? Which means that at low temperatures, it'll look like this. And as it gets hotter, the Gibbs delta G of mixing, the magnitude gets larger, and uh, that pushes it further from the uh, pure compounds. Now, something else to notice here is that if we write out our Gibbs curve, G is equal to X A G A plus X B. Oof, try that again. X B G B plus T R natural log. Try it again, sorry. T R X A natural log X A plus X B natural log X B. That is our G zero. That is our delta G mix. We can take and we can separate these out, right? Because that depends only on A, that depends only on A, and this depends only on B, this depends only on B. So we can say G is equal to XA GA plus RT natural log XA plus X B G B plus R T natural log X B. So this is what comes out if we take this picture, we put a atoms in, B atoms in, we keep them partitioned, we pull the partition out, and they mix. That's one path. Another path is that we can just have a reservoir. of our well-mixed A and B atoms and have our system. And we can take 
Na atoms out of the reservoir, and we can take Nb atoms out of the reservoir and put them together. And this looks messy, but it's, it's not really. It's, it's a way in which we can put them together, but in this, we have G, and I should say here as well. Maybe I'll, I don't, didn't really put a number in there, so let me uh, put it here. G is equal to mu A and A plus mu B and B. So the free energy of the system is the chemical work to take a B atom and put it into the system and an A atom and put it into the system or a number of them. And if we take all of this and we divide it by one over Avogadro's number, we get G is equal to mu A X A plus mu B X B. I don't mean Avogadro's number. I mean, sorry, the total number of moles. Uh, then you get the uh, free energy of the system in terms of the chemical potential of A and B and the mole fraction of A and B. Now these chemical potentials, they're the chemical potentials of this particular reservoir, which happens to have the same uh, behavior and local chemical environments as the system, right? So this takes into account the uh, local chemistries. Now, because this expression for the Gibbs free energy and this expression for the Gibbs free energy are equal, and because we can separate a, uh, a and B, and here are A and B, we can set those two equal to each other, and we get mu A is equal to G A plus R T natural log X A, and mu B is equal to G B plus R T natural log X B. So for the ideal solution model, we can express the chemical potential in the system and you know, the reservoir as well, but in the system uh, in terms of the free energy of the pure A and B, the temperature the system is in, and the amount of A and B that are present in the system. So this is ideal mixing.